I'm Steve here at Twin Cities Maker, and this is an intro to the 1325 CNC router. The cutting area is 1300 millimeters in the X direction and 2500 millimeters in the Y direction, or a little more than 4 feet by 8 feet. The axes are driven by stepper motors with a rack and pinion on the X and Y axes and a ball screw on the Z axis. It has a 3 kilowatt spindle accepting ER20 collets. There's a 4 zone vacuum table as well as T slots on the outer perimeter of the spoiler board. The whole thing runs on a Centroid Acorn controller, so the control user interface is run on a basic Windows PC. To power the machine on and off, turn the on off switch located on the control box and also turn on the computer. You do need your own account to the Twin Cities Maker network domain and to have been granted access to this computer upon completion of training before you can log in. There's an emergency stop button on the control box that will power off the entire machine when pressed. If the emergency stop button has been pressed, it can be released by turning the button clockwise. To open the control user interface, run the Centroid CNC software. With the control interface open, press the reset button to clear the reset that will have been tripped by default every time you start up Centroid. Official documentation for using the Centroid controller can be found on the Centroid CNC12 operator manual, linked in the description below. The manual is quite long and it contains a lot of information you probably don't need, so I'd recommend reading our wiki page instead to get a handle on the basics of the control system. The wiki page is also linked in the description below. Here is a quick overview of the various functions on the Centroid home screen. The homing button. The first thing you should do before running any program is to home the machine. When you press the reset home button, the machine will slowly jog toward the home position until all three limit switches have been triggered. After all three limit switches have been triggered, the spindle will be at machine coordinates 000, also known as home position. The jog panel. The jog controls allow you to manually move the spindle around in order to position the bit. For example, if you press the plus Y jog button, the spindle will move in the positive Y direction. You can toggle between rapid and slow jogging by pressing the button with the turtle on the hair. Rapid jogging allows you to move the spindle more quickly, whereas slow jogging allows you to move the bit with greater precision. There is also an incremental mode which allows you to jog a specified distance at every press of a jog button. The digital readout. There are two sets of numbers showing the location coordinates of the spindle the current coordinates and the machine coordinates. The current coordinates are relative. They are defined in relation to the zero position, which is set by you, the operator. Therefore, the current coordinate system changes every time you have a new setup or when someone else uses the machine. The machine coordinates, on the other hand, are absolute. The machine coordinates are defined in relation to the home position, which was set when you ran the homing sequence. Assuming that the limit switches on the CNC machine have good repeatability, the machine coordinates should be consistent from run to run. What this means is if you use the machine one day and come back, say, a week later, the home position should ideally be in exactly the same position as the last time you used it. Again, this is dependent on the repeatability of the limit switches, so you don't always want to rely on the machine coordinates. Spindle control. Typically, the spindle is controlled automatically by the program being run, but it is sometimes useful to be able to control the spindle manually. This can be done in the spindle control panel. Cycle start and cycle stop. Cycle start and cycle stop are the red and green buttons shown. Cycle start will start the currently loaded G-code commands, whether they be entered in manually or loaded from a G-code file. 
cycle stop stops whatever G code commands are currently running. If you hit the cycle stop button while running a G code file, you will have to start the program again all the way back from the beginning. At the bottom of the screen is the menu bar. Load is used to load a G-code file you created in your CAM software. Graph is used to display a graph of the toolpath trajectories. MDI stands for manual data input and is used to manually enter in G-code commands. CAM is used for conversational programming as a way to run simple toolpaths without the need for a G-code file or separate CAM software. For more information, refer to the CNC12 operator manual. The 1325 machine is equipped with a vacuum table, which is great for holding down flat material like plywood and other sheet goods. Our vacuum hold down system uses a nested based flow through system, meaning vacuum is pulled through an MDF spoil board. To hold material down on the table, simply lay the sheet on the spool board and turn on the vacuum. It is up to you to ensure that there is enough hold down force to secure your material while it is being cut. The vacuum table is separated into four different zones, each two feet wide in the X direction and four feet long in the Y direction. Underneath the table, there are four shutoff valves, one for each zone. So you can concentrate the vacuum to only the zones you are using. Because the MDF spill board is porous, there's going to be leakage in the vacuum system. To maximize holding force, you should minimize this leakage as much as possible. You can use mylar sheets or any other material to cover up any exposed spool board area in the active zones. An alternative to using the vacuum table is to use T-slot clamps. These are better suited for small stock for stock that is not flat, like rough sawn slabs, or just for getting a better holding force for your 4x8 sheets. There are T-slots accessible all around the perimeter of the spool board. If you want to use T-slot clamps inside of the perimeter, use one or more of our T-slot panels. These panels each cover the same area as one vacuum zone. They can be held down by vacuum while your stock is being held down by T-slot clamps. There are various other ways to hold down material, such as with double-sided tape, screws, or a composite nail gun. Just make sure not to get any screws or nails into the vacuum spoil board, because this surface needs to be fairly pristine in order to ensure a good vacuum hold down. If you're going to use screws or nails, add another spool board on top of the vacuum spool board to protect it. Bits are held in the spindle by ER20 collets. We have a large selection of fractional and metric collets up to half inch or 13 millimeters. Be sure to use the correct collet for the shank diameter of your bit. To install a collet, first insert the collet into the collet nut at an angle. The collet should snap into place. Then thread the collet nut onto the spindle just enough to hold it in place. Do not tighten the nut before you have inserted a bit, otherwise the bit won't fit in the collet. Insert the bit into the collet. Make sure to push the bit up into the collet past the minimum insertion mark. If there is no ins minimum insertion mark, insert the bit as far as it will go without the flutes themselves being inside the collet. Tighten the collet nut first by hand and then using the two spindle wrenches. To set X and Y zero, first jog the bit to the X and Y zero position. Once the bit is there, press set axis zero to set each axis to zero individually.
You can also press set all zero to set all axes to zero. You will see the values in current coordinates change to zero. Another way to set X and Y zero is to use the M57 macro. M57 automatically sets the corner of the spool board to zero. So if you use the flip up tabs to align your stock, then M57 will automatically set the corner of the stock to zero. This can be a great time saver as you do not have to manually jog the bit to the zero location. To run the M57 macro, enter the command M57 into the MDI interface or press the M57 shortcut button. The easiest way to set Z0 is by using the touch probe. To use the touch probe, run the M55 macro, either by entering in the command M55 through MDI or by pressing the M55 shortcut button. A series of prompts will be displayed, guiding you through the steps for using the touch probe. After following these prompts, you have to place the touch probe on the Z0 plane. Be sure you know whether the Z0 plane is on the top of the material, the top of the spool board, or whatever position you set as Z0 in your CAM software. When using the M55 macro, the bit will lower until it senses the touch probe. It will make two touches to get a precise reading of the Z0, and then it will raise the bit all the way up. Once finished, the macro will set the bottom of the touch probe as Z0. A G-code file is a file read by the controller to execute a set of toolpaths. Most people use some sort of CAM software, such as VCarve Pro or Fusion 360, to generate the toolpaths and G-code files. If you're using CAM software, make sure to use the correct post processor, in this case Centroid. This will ensure that the code will be correctly interpreted by the controller. A G-code file will often have the extension .nc or .cnc. However, it doesn't really matter the extension of the file because G-code files are simply text files. To load the G-code file into the controller, transfer it to the control computer on a flash drive. From the menu bar at the bottom of the window, click Load and browse for the file you saved. Once the file has been loaded, pressing Cycle Start will start the program. When cutting wood, always use the dust collector whenever it is practical to do so. Active dust collection will prevent dust from getting onto the precision guide rails and ball screws, prolonging the life of these components. It also makes cleanup quicker and will save you time in the end. When you are finished using the router, be sure to vacuum up any dust remaining on the scoreboard so it is clean and ready to use for the next person. Return the spindle to the home position by jogging it there, or by using the G28 command through MBI. Log off from the computer, power down the controller, and return all tools to their original locations. This was a quick demo of how to operate the 1325 CNC router at Twin Cities Maker. For up-to-date and more detailed information, read the wiki page linked in the description below.